Welcome into another episode of Farm to Fame. I am Kelsey Wingert. He is Peter Moylan. He is Maddie Mass. And uh, we're all back in our regularly scheduled recording areas after being in Denver. Mm. I have a pirate's bat. Uh, Oops. Um, Denver was the best week of my life. You've said that multiple times. Yeah. I'm, starting to, I'm starting to believe you, honestly. It was an adult summer camp. Yeah, it was a frat house for 40-year-olds. I'm the, I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. And um, we talked about it, obviously, on our last episode when we were in Denver. But the, the cool thing about this company is if you're a baseball fan, you probably love the content within this company because we're all baseball people. Right. But Mm -hmm. Jimmy and Jake, like the people at the top of the company are legitimately some of the best (laughs) idiots um, for one, but we're not talking about their intelligence. We're talking about their character and they are some of the best people I've ever met. Like ever. They are so considerate and make everybody feel so comfortable. Yeah. So genuine, exactly who, you listen to on the podcast, Mm. you know, like Mm. people asked me what I thought about Trevor Plouffe. And I was like, he's exactly who you listen to on the podcast. Everybody was great. And it's a great company and they put everybody in incredible positions to succeed. And it was a blast. I've had a lot of, I've I've worked in a few, a lot of companies, let's be honest. I've worked in a lot of companies and it's very hard to like everyone. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard here at all. Uh, this place every single person that was in that house outside that house in the three houses everybody at John Boy has something to offer and contributes and is so genuine and is so nice it's it's really refreshing honestly and Maddie Mass didn't stop working the entire time he had videos edited for every pick we got there on the day of the draft don't forget we got there on the day of the draft so maddie mass we're all like yeah maddie's just (laughs) editing sending out tweets i'm getting hammered yeah maddie (laughs) but look it looks like we're doing all the work but it's actually maddie mass is the backbone of this thing yeah i was locked in the day that we locked we went over to the first watch party was the yankees game watch party we left early so I could go and cover the futures. Yeah, game. Peter and I didn't even get to see you at didn't the. Didn't see you there. I found your boarding pass, but that was it. My Ooh. boarding pass was yeah. there. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> you could just find the crumb trails of. You were leaving clues for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like <laughs> national yeah. treasure. But yeah, then the futures game rolled right into the card opening. Rolled right into the draft. draft. The first, yeah, the first day was pandemonium, and then. Just kept going from there. Yeah, it was a yeah. great trip. It looked like it looked like all we did was have fun, and that's all we did. We did but at yeah. the same time, it was literally from eight thirty in the morning until eleven o'clock at night. There was something going on for everyone. Jimmy and Jake were literally were running on fumes. The morning that we left, I feel like Jake was three percent alive. Like if yeah. we had a battery <laughs> charge, <laughs> I think Jake was at three. Yeah. The best video to sum up where Jake was at was that rolling along the... <laughs> <laughs> so funny. In the airport. That was oh. so good. But the people Weird. behind the scenes, like like we said, Matty Mass literally okay. didn't stop. He had videos already edited and tweeted out a little tidbit about every guy in the first round of the draft. The people Sam, behind the Kyle, scenes... Yeah, everyone. Sam and Bill. I freaking love Bill, Rob. Rob. There were just... Sam there God. were... So, and I got to meet Luke, Jimmy's brother, for the first time. Uh, Luke yeah. and Kyle helping us with with our social media requirements, so we didn't have to think about anything. Um, yeah. I don't know, and just getting to spend time with Joe's and Keith and Ashland and BBD and Trev, like people we hadn't met. Man, this company is sick. We're doing it. Yeah. We are doing it. Yeah. So um, that was Denver. Uh, Peter had the best week of his life. So. <laughs> I've had three kids, so I can't say that. You can say that. <laughs> oh, and and so. I've been married, and I got married twice. So it's like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Sixth best week of your life. Sixth best day of my life, yeah. Okay, well, it was, my, it was the best week of mine. Um, adult summer camp. 
the front yard yeah. games are so much fun. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and get into our opener segment. Peter scraped his knee. I did. In the front yard games. Um, Going all out for my team, which you weren't on, by the way. So yeah, that wasn't no. for you. <laughs> that was for the other guys. Okay, opener segment. We did some draft coverage with the last show, but it was a little all over the place because everybody was in the house and we were all hanging out. So yeah. we want to... Just kind of like quick, very quickly re recap the draft. So Peter, uh, uh, there was the MLB pipeline article that was really good. Um, mm -hmm. What what stuck out to you that you read about um, this draft? Honestly, just the the way that they talked about the Pirates draft, and obviously, the thing with drafts is that it's so hard. You can grade the draft based upon what we know now, mm -hmm. but really, you can't grade this draft until four or five years down the track. So you can yeah. you can assume something's going to happen. Judging by what Jim Callis said in that article, you know, the Pirates had probably the best draft as far as pure talent goes. They took the best bat. They took the best athlete. They took the best high school pitcher. Like that's, as far as top of lists goes, the Pirates probably chopped off the most of the top of the list. So um, is, there, is there a reason why you're holding the bat upside down? Um, no. Uh, and another thing about the Pirates... They got some great value picks. They got yeah. Bubba Chandler, and he was the mm -hmm. 21st ranked draft prospect. They got him 72nd overall. They got Anthony Solamento, who a ton of people were talking about. He's a left lefty out of high school. He's this funky mm. delivery, different arm slot, but people really, really like him. But he was the 30, the 17th ranked draft prospect and they got him at 37. So that's two guys after having the first overall pick that they got at great value. And they probably mm. were able to get those guys because they signed Henry Davis for about 2 million under slot. Yeah. They signed the best college bat for 2 million under slot and got a, like, this is the part of the draft that I'm still learning about. You know, mm -hmm. it's the, not necessarily going after the best available, but with the best one you can afford. So yeah, Casey um, that's, taught us that. That's a, I guess he did. Uh, what, and what's Katie, Casey's title? You need to introduce him as his official title every time he, he's mentioned. He is our um, our in-house draft expert. Resident? What was the word? Resident. <laughs> Resident. That was the word, draft expert. <laughs> Oopsies. You're fine. Um, but yeah, Stay Bubba with. Chandler was one of those guys. Bubba Chandler is like our guy, Jeff Frank Cor. He is a Georgia high school right-hander shortstop and potential Clemson quarterback was Bubba Chandler. And he was the one who was taken 72nd overall. Um, is he going to sign? Well, I think that's why he dropped so much um, because he was like playing that, playing that card up. There was some, there was some quote from Dabo Sweeney, Clemson's head football coach that I don't know if I have to say that, but not in the South, not in the no South. Matter, yeah, no matter what path he chooses, you know, it'll be great. And then there was another quote that uh, Chandler had high praise of Dabo Sweeney. And it was like right before the draft. So I think teams probably don't want to waste a first round pick on somebody that just praised Dabo. Dabo. He did. Um, I just searched his name on Twitter. He did tweet out. He quote tweeted the Pirates tweet of them announcing that they drafted him and said, let's get to work with a handshake. Ooh, that's um, a, you remember uh, Jerry Maguire? You, yeah. I can't sign anything, but you have my word. And it's <laughs> as strong as oak. <laughs> I mean, it's going to take a lot to get him away, obviously, but I feel like he wouldn't be tweeting that stuff out if like, he wouldn't be tweeting like okay. a handshake. I don't really Here's know. Here's a question for the pod. Here's okay. a question for the pod. Okay. If the two of you were both talented enough to get drafted in both football and baseball, which one would you choose? Baseball. More baseball. money in baseball. And you're not getting hit. Same exact reason. More money and okay. longevity. You have a longer chance to go for longer. Okay. But if you are drafted in the first round of the NFL draft, you're almost guaranteed to make it to the NFL. If you're drafted in the first round of the MLB draft, You've still got a long way to go. Well, I mean, you can ask us all day, but the Kyler Murrays of the world, I think a lot more people choose football, right? Football. So, at least initially, 
Um, is the yeah. money even like if you're drafted in the first round in the NFL draft, it's more money in the NFL, the signing bonuses. Okay. Big time. Um, so yeah, I mean, we will be very curious to see what, what happens with Bubba Chandler, but mm. if you're a surface level tweet searching human, um, like me at times, his Twitter leads you to believe that he's open to, <laughs> to signing with them and, uh, they'll probably have a little bit more money. Um, uh, what else stood out to you, Pita? Oh, you have your hand raised. It's perfect timing. Am I a surface level tweet searcher? No, that's me sometimes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Just, I'm just, I like to identify with things. If, yeah, yeah. if I am one of those was, things, I, I'm, I'm in. That was I. Um, a storyline yeah. that, that I really liked, Peter, that you probably yes. liked as well. The Angels. Yeah. 20 picks, drafted 20 pitchers. And Jimmy told us this in the van, 19 of them were college arms. Um, I love that. Because can we have we yes. has there ever been a draft like that in the yeah, history? I, like has everybody just said, it. you know what, we need we need arms, let's go get arms. I highly doubt it. But when you look at their system, they don't need that they don't need bats. That's no, they don't need bats. What they need is arms. Yeah, if you look at their system, pitching is obviously currently their struggle right now. And it is the reason that we do not get to see Mike Trout and Shohei Otani in October. Okay. I'm mm. very upset about that. But if you look, you would imagine if their pitching's like that bad up right now, you'd imagine that they have some guys who are hopefully coming up. Like they don't really have many good prospects in their system that are good pitchers. So just Detmers. Yeah, they do. What? Just Reed Detmers. Detmers. Yeah. 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 And I really like him, but he was drafted last year. So it's like, I'm glad to see them just own it and say okay a few of look, these guys gotta work out and look and here's the thing right so who's to know that if you go into the draft and you're like oh let's take the best available players or whatever angels have a need they knew what the need was they cast a wide net they're gonna catch something and they're gonna catch something with fire you know the the law of averages say you draft 29 pitchers you're gonna get six of them that are gonna make the big leagues yeah any other pitchers stand out to i mean uh not pitchers teams i mean the Marlins had a good, like this, the Marlins had a pretty good draft. Has, has it come out why Khalil Watson dropped as much as he did? I think he was fourth going into the ranked number four overall and he dropped to 16. So he was the yeah. steal of the draft in my eyes to the yeah. Marlins. But yeah. do we, I mean, he has one of the best bats in the draft. It's an electric bat. He's super athletic. So mm -hmm. what do, has there been any reason that's come out, Maddie? Have you seen? I haven't seen anything. I'm going to do a quick search to see if he was over slot. Yeah. I mean, and like, that's like the angels, the angels took Sam Bachman ninth overall. And a lot of people were saying they would have liked Kumar rocker going to the angels instead, just because Kumar is a guy who we think we'll see soon. But again, it's the conversation we had on the last episode that Kumar rocker was, I mean, he signed for his, his slot was 4.7 million and there's reports that he's signing for 6 million. So he was demanding that over slot. So maybe that's why they went with the angels. We go with a guy like Bachman over Kumar, but K Khalil Watson dropping the way he did was very surprising. Uh, just doing a, a very quick search here. It looks like Khalil was a little bit over asking over slot. Okay. And now they tried to go under slot the rest of the draft. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. So Khalil Watson was interesting. The Marlins added a lot of athleticism to their team, which I'm so excited to see just like what the Marlins amount to over the next couple of years, because mm. they have some good pieces to build off of, obviously. Um, but I just like, I don't know. I've never seen them good. So I'm just kind of like, can they be good? They made the playoffs last year, right? Yeah, that was wild. The Tigers were another good team. In the draft, they took Jackson Job third overall, which I was kind of surprised about. Since I've gone and looked at videos, I'm not surprised anymore. He's pretty gross. <laughs> well, they're saying that he had the best slider in the draft. Yeah. Um, they're saying he could have easily been the best pitching prospect in the draft. He was ranked seventh and he went third. But yeah, I mean, people really liked, really liked him going into the draft, just maybe not that high. And then them getting who oh, uh, Ty Madden out of Texas. They got him 
like 32nd overall, he dropped a lot too, um, which was a good value pick for them. But Tigers had a good draft. Reds had a good draft. Pirates had a good draft. Marlins. So we think. We think what? We think that's all we can do right now is just predict. Yeah. So that was um, kind of another overview of the draft. We covered a little bit of it last week. So go check out that episode. You can hear from Chris Rose. You can hear from Jake and Jimmy uh, about their opinions on the Indians, the Yankees. Um, We covered it all with with those guys. So another great um, story in our opener segment today, and I'm sure Peter is going to have – a great uh, point or takeaway on this. See, why are you going to set me up like that? How do you know that I'm going to have a great point or takeaway? Because I know this is something that you're, (laughs) I know this is something that you're passionate about and it's something that we all should be passionate about. Near and dear. And you just have so many good takes like for everything that I'm just assuming that you do. I'm just the old man, the old wise (laughs) man. Um, Drew Robinson. Drew the man Robinson. So this is, um, there were a lot of stories out about him at the the start of the season. He had lost his right eye in a suicide attempt um, last year Mm -hmm. and had battled his way back to um, playing. And it came out this week. He announced that he was going to retire from playing and he's transitioning into the Giants front office as a mental health advocate. I don't know if you watched Huge. his, I don't know if you watched his interview about it, Peter. Um, but he said that he started finding himself playing again, slipping back into those dark places. Um, and he said that, that he had expressed that to the giants and they even sent him home for a week and just mm. said, like, go take the time that you need to take, like be with your family, go home and, you know, And he said that he just was getting to, he was feeling those feelings and reaching those places again and just decided that that wasn't the playing environment, the everyday grind of baseball um, wasn't good for him. But being around the game is going to be good for him still. I think that's, having the sport be such a massive part of your life for so long and then um, being able to find a way to stay in the game that you love so much, not as a playing capacity, but being able to help people, mm-hmm. probably help more people in this role, obviously. Uh, who else to speak on such an issue than someone that dealt with it to the, to the extreme? I mean, took it to, to the, the literally extreme as you can take these thoughts yeah. and survived and now has had more time to think about it than anybody else. I cannot imagine how much of an of a asset this is going to be for the Giants moving forward to be able to, if you have anybody in that organization that is even, even thinking negatively towards themselves or having a bad experience or, or, or dealing with whatever, to have someone like Drew Robinson to turn to and consult with and to get advice from is going to be a massive step forward in the whole, the whole mental health thing. Right? Yeah. This is probably the first, the first hire that may be specifically for mental health within an organization. I think, I don't think I've heard. That's what I was been... going to ask. If you've played for a team that, that had any, any type of mental health sports, support. sports psychologist. Yes. Um, but not so it's more of like testing and discovering what makes you click as a player, as opposed to diving into your personality and your mental health. Yeah. If that makes sense. They care more about, the, the initial, and, and I don't mean this, but I'm saying that the framework of the sports psychologist was to try and increase that player's productivity as opposed to maintaining mental health. Yeah. Okay. okay. Does that make so, sense? So do you see this? I feel like this, ha- I feel like this is- This is one of 30 that's going to be hired. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and not everybody's going to get the chance to have someone who's who's as qualified in the, in the area. So as relatable. Robinson, so relatable. Yeah. Can, can talk from experience, which is yeah. what, you know, a lot of these people that are, are spouting out about mental health, they've never really experienced what it's like to deal with it. So yeah. they can read it in a book and they can have other people's experience, but until you've dealt with it yourself, you can't really speak on it with any kind of authority. Yeah. I feel like, and you obviously can speak to this a ton more, but people have been so much more open to talking about like mental health and struggles with anxiety or depression over the last few years. And obviously during COVID, um, I think more people than we could ever imagine experienced it for different reasons. Um, Mm. 
but it has to be pretty prominent in baseball. And I know a bunch of like men, athletic men might not have talked about it before, but I'm assuming that that's been a heavier topic in, in clubhouses and within friend groups within, within teams. But is it pretty, yeah. uh, guys, I mean, with the mental game of baseball and the pressure. It's just more accepted to, to it's more accepted to not be okay. Like it's yeah. okay to not be okay is I guess what everyone's sort of learning now. And the more people that come out and speak to it, the more comfortable people are going to be to even approach the situation. Like yeah. it's, it takes a lot for someone to, to admit that they're dealing with something first of all. And then even it takes 15 times more than that to go and approach someone else about it and actually have a conversation. Yeah. So the more people that come out and speak to it, the more comfortable those people that are sitting there going, fuck, you know, I'm struggling right now, but I don't know where to turn. Well, he turned to this guy or he was able to turn to this guy. So as long as people see that there are options out there and it's not just the be all and end all, you, you're not alone. You're not dealing with this shit by yourself. Someone's dealt with this first. Yeah. You're not the first person to go through this. Like the, the more conversations there are, the better off everyone's going to be. Yeah. So um, very happy for Drew Robinson. Obviously this is an exciting week, but a super emotional week for him retiring from the game. Yeah. And also like super kudos to the San Francisco giants and that Absolutely. front office and that organization, yeah. not just for this, for this role that they created for him, but, um, for the things that he said about him, if you search it on Twitter and you watch the interview of him and he, and he says like, yeah, nobody knows this, but like they sent me home for a week when I told them I was struggling. And he was like, that more than anything should speak to the kind of organization that they are. So, mm. um, the first yes. place giants, by the way, <laughs> Dude. <laughs> um, the giants and the Dodgers, aren't they starting like a three game set this week? Mm -hmm. And the Dodgers Pad are a game behind Padres Bravos too. Not that oh, anyone man. cares about the Braves right now, but I do. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to get to this eventually. The Mets um, have had a pretty easy stretch out of the all-star break a little bit, but dude, they have a five game series versus the Braves next week, a five gamer. Mm -hmm. Two doubles, <laughs> two, two double headers, right? Um, I don't know. I don't do math, but they, um, okay. it's a five game <laughs> series. I heard that, that I think it's a double header and then a three game series. The Mets, easy start was also against the pirates and they were nearly swept yeah, so. dude. if it wasn't for that comeback. michael conforto but did okay are we calling it fair or foul after we've seen the video of taiwan walker swiping the foul ball do people do that they just swat the ball yes away? yes yes <laughs> so once it's once it's foul to stop it from getting a chance to being fair I get again. that but you can just catch it, it up yeah, 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 that was the issue. Well, Peter, what was your what was your opinion on it as a pitcher? I I think that because see, it was too close to swipe. Like you've <laughs> got to you've got to at least give it a chance to turn off the line so there's some clear separation there, uh, or just pick it up and then you can tag the guy who's running past you rather yeah. than yeah. I, I mean, in his head, he's thinking it's foul. I'm just going to swipe it away, get a new baseball, and I'm going to start my my battle over again. But as soon as the umpire goes, fair ball, fair ball, he's like, oh, shit. Three runs scored. Three there's runs. A, there's too big of a swat. If you're <laughs> going to swat, you... Minimize the swat. Uh... Yeah. Keep the swats to, a, to, a, to a, a reachable length so you can run and grab it if you need to. All right. Oh, man. Yeah. Can we that put that on T-shirt? Hashtag keep your swats to a minimum so that if you need to go and grab the ball, you can. You can tag the runner running past you.com. And a paragraph. Dot yes. com. I don't need to make it into a website. Um, how did we get here? How did we get to this conversation? Talking about the Mets? Why was I talking about the Mets? I, I said the Braves and you were like, but the Mets have had an easy, you started it's it. so random. You, you were talking about the Braves and I just pivoted to the Mets? Yes. Nice. Okay. Well, let's pivot Good. back. Pivot! Let's go. Um, let's pivot we, back to the uh, Braves because. Right. Um, and Braves. Okay. My chair doesn't spin. Um, Did I you found, see that? That was sick. It was sick, but chairs are expensive. And I found this chair for like 80 bucks. And it's well, like, I'm sharing this chair. chair. I get this chair. I get to rent this chair on Mondays. And my mother in law <laughs> gets it from Tuesday to Friday. So. <laughs> um, Good. Okay. Let's. 
I, I'm sure we have a lot of Braves fans who um, listen to the podcast and oh, man, okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> Let, okay. Where are you at mentally with, do they think they're still in it? And are they still in it with these trades? Like, tell me, I, take me I, I think uh, we've, well, funnily enough, I've discussed this a fair bit over the last couple of days. Um, and I think that the Braves are in a really, really tough situation. Okay. I'm just going to lay it out there. Yeah. Two scenarios. They tread water and they stay within a couple of games of the Mets and we get to the trade deadline and we go out and we get a couple of pieces, hopefully bullpen pieces, who knows, maybe another starting pitcher, wherever they decide to go. And they make a run for it kind of towards the end of the year. Or scenario two is we spend the next 13 days before the trade deadline, not a math pod, and we evaluate because we're playing the Padres, we're playing the Mets, we're playing the Cardinals, we're playing the Brewers. At the end of these two weeks, we're going to get a real option sense of where they're at. So I don't know that anything's going to happen within the next seven to 10 days, except evaluation. And then after that point, they're going to look at where they're at. But the Mets, the Mets just can't take control. If, I, if I'm being honest, I think the yeah. Phillies are probably the team that's that's heading in, in the right direction right now. So it's just going to be a dog fight for the rest of the year. And no one seems to want to take control. And I just, I think it's unfortunate that all the things that's happened to the Braves have happened this year, because this could have been a year that they just ran away with this yeah. division if they didn't have all the shit that's gone on this year. Like Acuna, Soroka, Dano, Azuna, everything that's gone down this year. And they're still within three or four games of being in first place. But the problem is, what's the point of making the playoffs? Yeah, if you, if just you don't show have up? your key piece in Acuna. Right. Like that's your, that's your spark in every single game. Obviously, they still have some great bats on the team. But, I mean, Freddie's heating back up. I feel like I don't get to watch a lot of the games, but I know Ozzy has had some great games. Dansby's yeah. been super streaky, but he's on yeah. a tear right now. But this trade deadline is going to be berserk because that yeah. five-game series versus the Mets ends on the 29th. Yeah. And that series is going to dictate everything because that's five right. games in the standings up for grabs. Right. But even if they sweep, right, and they end up taking the division lead by a game, You've still got to hold that lead for six more, eight more weeks. Yeah. With the team that without you have Acuna. and without Acuna and without like the so I just I just don't think that you go all out because if you can re-sign Freddie and keep that core, that core's not going anywhere for five years. Yeah. So you don't have to rush it and try and force this year. You can take a step back and go, okay, reevaluate. Let's go. All right, we've got to sign Freddie Freeman. That's the first priority. Second priority, we need to go find some bullpen help for next year. Third priority, we need to get everybody healthy. Like whatever it is, yeah. set yourself up for another run in 2022 if these next two weeks don't go the way you want them to. Why aren't they re-signing Freddie? Like why is this? Why hasn't this happened yet? Is this an in-season thing? I don't know exactly why. Um, I can only assume that an offer was made and it wasn't an offer that one of the parties was looking for. So they figured yeah. that they'd see, you know, what happens. Okay. Um, it's the nature of the sport. Yeah. You've got to look at, you know, I'm sure the offer would have been something that made him the highest paid player in franchise history. So you think that's what he should get? Yes, I think he should get yeah. Goldsmith plus some because he's been a little bit better than... I mean, I, it's hard. the numbers are so similar. Uh, the only reason why I think Freddie may deserve more is because it's it's 2021 and contracts are bigger now. Yeah. Well, and I, and I don't know how much this plays into it, but like that clubhouse, everything about it, the personality, the... Everything about that clubhouse has changed without Freddie Freeman in there. Like he the is stadium, the ringleader the, of that. The stadium changes. Like everything, there's no number fives. There's yeah. like it's that's the and I know, I know that Freddie wants to stay in Atlanta. I He's, know he said for that in fact, interviews. And it's not just interview talk. Yeah. He wants to stay here. He has goals that he wants to hit and he wants to do it all for one team. So I think this is going to be Alex's biggest test over the next. 12 months is going to be how he handles that. 
Uh, it's, not, it's not a Braves club. We've got to move on. Come on. Okay. Dang it. I have so many <laughs> questions. I'll call you later. Um, yes. <laughs> but Jock Peterson has been good since he came over to the Braves. The Braves are now yeah. trading away. You tweeted it out. All of their first basemen, all of their yes. first base prospects are just trading just away. Just to make sure that Freddie feels comfortable heading into the offseason. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what, guys? Organizations aren't perfect. And GMs aren't perfect. There's there's a lot of pressure on people, okay? So no one is perfect out there. The best players aren't perfect. So if you feel like you come up short in the bedroom sometimes, it's perfectly okay. But if it's bothering you, there are options. So you go to getroman.com slash fame now with Roman. I mean, you've heard us talk about it. If you listen to any other podcast, you've heard us talk about it. You can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. So a U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plans. And if medication is appropriate, it ships straight to you for free with two-day shipping and it is super discreet. So like I mentioned, getting started is super simple. You can get any information on the website, getroman.com slash fame, and you complete an online visit. So again, getroman.com slash fame to get $15 off your first month. They are the sponsors of our Rookie of the Year Watch segment, which begins right now. Boop. Let's hit on the NL first, Peter. And it's the same names that we've been talking about. You have Trevor Rogers, you have Ion Anderson, you have Key Brian Hayes, you have Jonathan India, you have Jazz Chisholm, and you have Dylan Carlson. You do. Trevor Rogers had his first, since his first outing of this year, okay. only went four innings. Yeah. Now I have questions. Okay. He went four innings. Yep. Four hits, three runs, two earned runs, two walks, four Ks. He only had 81 pitches. So I'm of the thinking that this is the Marlins way of starting to limit his innings for the year. So that's what I was going to ask you about. He mm. has pitched the most innings by a rookie this year. He's at 101 and one third innings pitched. Yes. It's expected. This, what? Yes. I was just going to say, this is the reason why I think the eventual rookies of the years are going to come from hitters, because I don't think a pitcher is going to be able to maintain the mm -hmm. amount of innings and games that's going to be able to accrue the war that's going to be able to rival a hitter. Yeah. An everyday player. That's what I was going to ask you, because it's expected the Marlins are going to try to cap him somewhere between 170, 180. So mm -hmm. how much he pitches in the second half remains a huge question mark. They they tried the whole thing where they're bringing him out of the break as the fifth starter um, to give him, I guess, a few more days. But mm -hmm. my question to you is going to be, how much can you cut back on a rookie's innings and then not lose steam in that race? But you mentioned war. He has a 3.1 war, and that's a full win better than the next best rookie. So he has yeah. built yeah. a sizable league lead. Yeah. But at what it's point? It's like the tortoise and the hare. At what point, like, does the thing is, is like, no, we've mentioned it. Nobody is right there with him. No. Like, Key Brian Hayes, Jonathan India, Jazz Chisholm, Dylan Carlson, they're all hitting between like 250 and 270. But if they get hot, if they get yeah. hot, if they have a good month, you know, you can you can accrue a two war month or a one point okay. five war month as a hitter, as an everyday player. I didn't realize it was that easy to build war. That, well, well it's not, not easy, easy, but you gotta have it, yeah, you gotta ball out. Like Mike Trout in his best years. What's the best year Mike Trout's had in war wise? Like 12, 11, something like that? Wow. Eight. So, I wonder so, what the highest war in a single season for a player has ever been. Maddie's about to find out. So it's his to lose effectively. But it's just, when I say it's his to lose, he could go five innings, two runs for the rest of the year. And I think he's going to end up uh, winning the rookie of the year. The highest wars are Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth, first of all, the top three. It's 14.2 Babe Ruth in 1923. Jeez. What's the latest? What's the yeah, highest so recent? Recently is Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds. 2001, Barry Bonds, 11.9. 2002, 11.7. 2018, Mookie Betts had 10.7. So you could, you, you, could, you could go one and a half war a month 
one to two war would be an r- unbelievably impressive month. It's impeccable yeah. math Trout's, on your part. Trout's Thank best you. is 2016 and 2012. He has 10.5. Okay. I, I don't know if we want to get into like the injuries now because there's two within those NL yeah. Rookie of the Years. Go ahead. So um, there's Ian Anderson. Ion. Um, who, Ion Anderson, who honestly at this point probably would remain the best competition for Trevor Rogers for NL rookie of the year. He has a 356 ERA in 18 Mm -hmm. starts and he's pitched 96 innings at second behind Trevor Rogers. But what's the deal with, he was put on the IL. So what was shoulder inflammation. They got it uh, MRI and came back. Okay. So he's just going to shut down and restart his throwing program in a couple of days and hopefully only misses uh, two to three weeks. This isn't like them trying to give him rest, is it? To no. slow down his innings? Okay. So he like no. actually felt shoulder tightness. Yes. We're not in a position. The Braves are not in a position to be like, oh, we'll just tread water. It's fine. Okay. They need arms. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's Ion Anderson, like we mentioned, Jazz Chisholm. So I guess mm. now we're kind of like mixing our rookie of the year and injuries. But Jazz Chisholm exited the game versus the Phillies in tears, which yes. also means that Peter Moylan, Maddie Mass, and I were all in tears as well. Um, and the second, it was the first inning of the second game of a double header versus the Phillies. He went over four in the first game, but hmm. it was his left shoulder laying out his non-throwing shoulder. And it was an incredible diving attempt. And he, he came up crying, left the game. Um, he and Garrett Cooper both got hurt, which is not good for the Marlins, but the x-rays for Chisholm did come back negative and he and Cooper are going to get more testing in Washington. We cannot lose another star. Like, it's we not cannot. good for baseball. It's not just good for the moment. It's not good for baseball. Yeah. Um, this is twice in a week that I've watched two of the most exciting players in the game leave the field in tears because of injuries. So yeah. it's just, it's unfortunate. It's this, and it's not like it's a, you know, these are two injuries. One was a landing on a knee and one was a landing on a shoulder. So it's yeah. like, it's not, they're just playing the game. It wasn't like that was a hamstring from running. It was. They're both playing know, the game super hard, which is what makes right. them so exciting. Like right. both of the injuries happened on them trying to make spectacular plays. We didn't know uh, no restrictions. We, 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 like this is the last thing I need is for them to come back. You know, this is going to harp there, especially Ronald. Like yeah, yeah. he's going to probably, the f- 40 40 thing might have to wait a couple of years um, until his knees fully recovered. We watched it. What happens when they come back from injury initially? They're not as aggressive on the bases as they would have been if they were feeling 100%. They're just trying to, you know, so the, the, the level of play goes down a little bit for a few months after they come back from injury, too. So that's the unfortunate part. Yeah. Um, so very sad about Jazz. Yes. Um, Dylan Carlson's treading water, Key Brian Hayes. Uh, and I mean that in like, He's fine. Like he's sitting 250 in his last seven or something. You're doing great. Thank you. Um, But do you know, and Key Brian Hayes, same for him. Do you know who people are like super high on right now? Jonathan India. Mm. And I know we've mentioned it, but Reds fans are like loving this cat. I think it's the hair. Jack Sparrow. Can we just call him Jack Sparrow? Yes. He hit okay. that game time home run in, in the bottom of the eighth that inning is. on Saturday and like social media blew up for him. Yeah. He leads all rookies in walks, which I love. So he's somebody, he has the best average out of all of the hitters that I mentioned um, mm. in NL rookie of the year. He just doesn't have the power, but he has if the hair. Want, and I power. think that when, when you were able to have hair that long as a man and rock it, that accounts in cat years to about seven home runs yes you're working with two microphones right now by the way yes okay um okay so that's the that is the nl um (laughs) you want to talk about the al the al still bores me um i've got it ready okay akil badu five hits in the last three games Hit 348 in June, got his average up to 275 for the season. Casey Mize hasn't pitched since July 7th, but he's scheduled to pitch today. And Adolis Garcia has been hitless since the All Star break. Moving on. Okay. You see the difference, Kels? You see the difference there? Yeah. But the NL's the NL has more storylines than the AL, you know? Because you keep diving into them. I can dive into American League storylines too, but we don't want to. All right. We are a. 
People like the longer episodes, Peter. Did you not read the comments? My biggest concern here coming up on the top 10 is Peter alluded to it. Mm. We could spend a few minutes trying to figure out how to say some of these names. Yeah. Yeah. We are in trouble. Um, We're just going to say them with confidence and quickly. Mm. Um, (laughs) And you guys will just have to accept that they're tough names. And um, a lot of these guys that are in like a ball, there's not broadcast uh, video of their home run. So we have no way to (laughs) figure Mm. out the pronunciation. So you or me, Peter, top 10 prospects, baby. You should go after that intro. You should definitely go after that. I would be just, what? I just changed the zoom on my thing somehow, on my words. Um, Um, Start again. We're gonna start the whole pod again. Um, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Sure. I'd love to start. Start. Luis Avilas Jr. That was good. Drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers in the mm. 30th round of the 2013 draft. Playing shortstop for the Angels now, double A team, Rock City Trash Pandas. Yeah, baby, Trash Pandas, please. Send Peter Moylan a hat so he can Please. wear it on the podcast because he loves the minor league teams. You have the greatest name in minor league baseball. Yeah. If Rosie can have the rest of them. I want the Trash Pandas. Trash Pandas is amazing. I didn't know where to. So there, it's just, he has just had a really good run at the moment. So over the last seven day period, he slashed 379, 486, and 1241 with four doubles, seven home runs. 10 runs scored and 17 RBIs. So wow. in July, he's hitting 298 with eight home runs and 23 RBIs. Jose Marmella hosts. Um, Marmella hosts. Marmella hosts. Marmella hosts. I should know that um, because he's literally played 31 games for the big league club this year. Marmella hosts. My son. Yeah, okay. I think that's he, what? Go, go ahead. <laughs> He's in AAA right now for the Mariners. 31 games up this year. He only hit 139, but in 42 AAA games this season, he's hitting 369 with 15 home runs and 37 RBI. Um, again, in 42 games. He went hitless on Sunday, but before that, Peter, mm. he had an 11-game hitting streak going into that game where he rose his average from 313, which is already an incredible batting average, to 369. So he he hit so well that he took an incredible batting average to an unreal batting average. He was hitting 538 with seven home runs and 17 RBI in that 11-game hitting streak. He had back-to-back nights with a home run on Friday and Saturday, six home runs in seven games month of july you ask yeah i did 438 baby wow yeah jose marmella ho- Marme- marmella <laughs> marshmallow <laughs> see see i've never been good at the name thing okay not a math pod or a speaking pod uh, what are we then english if pod we are not an english we're an australian pod okay fine um this is another tough one brandon Mm. P mm-hmm. F mm. A A D T. So I don't want to insult the man, but if I'm looking <laughs> at that, I'm reading that as fart <laughs> because the P is silent and the yeah, D yeah, yeah. is got to be silent. So it's like F A A T. Or do you go perfadit? Perfadit. Perfadit. No, it's fart. Or fat. 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 Brandon, can you help us? Yeah, one time. Can anybody, can you look it up, type it in, see if if Google gives us correct pronunciation? Sure. Just play it over the speaker because I don't, again, Brandon, I, I mean, I don't want to say it incorrectly, but if I was to read this, in front of a thousand people, I would read it as fart, fad, fad. I wonder if it's in his uh, Twitter bio. I would right. put it in mine. Ready? It's not. Yeah. Fad. Fad. It says 
It says that it's Luxembourgish. Yes, I was just going to say it's definitely European, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. German. Okay. Okay. Brandon Holt drafted by Jake Snakes in the fifth round of the 2020 draft. He managed to do something rarely seen in mm. the minor leagues. What is that you ask? I don't know. A nine inning complete game. He threw nine innings, four hits, one walk, five Ks, and only 92 pitches. So right now, forget the fart. I'm going to call you Brandon Maddox, okay? <laughs> for the season, for the season, Brandon has 11 games, 11 starts, 67.1 innings, and a 3.7 ERA with a 0.95 whip. So having a very nice first professional season. Congratulations. Well, maybe yeah, Brandon. There you go, Brandon. We're just going to start calling you BP. Oralvis Martinez. Oralvis. Oral, Oralvis. My phone. I'm so sorry. Um, you should be. You so Blue Jays. <laughs> My and Jake's Toronto Blue Jays. He is in low A. He's a shortstop. Okay. On Saturday, he had a good week. On Saturday, he had a three home run night with nine RBI. Okay. <laughs> um, this week, he had three four hit games. Okay. Um, since July 13th, he's hitting 500 with seven home runs and 16 RBI since July 13th. He took okay. his average from 262 to 291. So he was like, Hitting well, but then he just is turned into a literal fireball. So holy cow. That's Oralvis yeah. Martinez for the Oralvis Martinez. Outstanding. Wow. Brian Lavastida. Lavastida. <laughs> I thought I got I nailed that. That's good. Drafted by the Indians in the 15th round of the 2018 draft. He's catching for their high A affiliate the Lake County captains. I didn't, again, I didn't know how far back to go with this guy because he's been absolutely raking, but I figured that just go back to the current on base streak, which is 19 games. Wow. Extended it again yesterday. He is 30 for 71 with 19 runs scored, nine doubles, four home runs, 17 RBIs and four stolen bases as a catcher. Wow. So for and the season, what stretch? Why are you saying he's thirty for seventy-one? Because that's the last nineteen games for his oh, last okay, okay. current okay, okay, current okay, on base okay. percentage. Okay. Yeah. So I just did say that as at the start of that whole yeah, yeah, spiel. Yeah, yeah. Is that I was just go like, this is why didn't you just say his batting games. average? <laughs> and why does he only have seventy-one at bats? <laughs> right now he's hitting three twenty-six for the season. So congratulations wow. to you, Brian. Keep it up, big fella. La vestida. There's not a hotter hitter in the Indians organization, by the way. I imagine he's not a big fella swiping four bases as a catcher. If he's hitting yeah. 324, he's a big fella. It doesn't matter. Jake's a big fella and he's four foot two. <laughs> Jake's the best. He is. So is Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy's yeah. the J Jimmy's clearly the brains of the organization. <laughs> and Jake is clearly the personality. Like Combined but Jimmy two, is super funny too. So fucking funny, exactly. I know. I don't know. Jimmy mentioned it on Talking Baseball, but I've never belly laughed as much as I did in that mm. week. Um, okay. You're welcome. Richie Palacios. Palacios. Richie Palacios. Maddie just crushing us with the names this week. Yeah, Indians Double A second baseman. This week he's hitting 440 with two home runs and 10 RBI. What did these guys do during the break? Well, on Tuesday, Richie went five for five with two doubles and three RBI. So he had consecutive games this week with two doubles in each, three multi-hit games, and he took his average from 273 to 293 this week. We're getting there, Richie. We're getting there. Let's get a three, baby. Let's get a three in the front. We're on our way. Richie, baby. Before the yeah. next one, I think Kelsey should go twice. Okay, go Kelsey. Okay. Double bang him. Mm. Let's talk about Brandon Marsh. I know Brandon Marsh, by the way. Personally. 
personally. Worked out. Oh, well. Jordan were you worked. upset when you saw him on my list? No, because I think it's going to get a better perspective. Okay. Brandon Marsh is the Angels' number one prospect, 38th overall in baseball. He was a second round pick in 2016 out of Buford High School. He's a Georgia man, plus defender, mm-hmm. good speed. Debuted on Saturday, not Sunday night. He started in center field. He hit seventh versus the Mariners. He went over four with two Ks. Um, okay. His, if you look at his, if you look at his batting average in AAA, it's not great. Like, it's just kind of like, whoa, why'd you call this guy up? But he was hurt. He had shoulder inflammation and he came back on July 9th. And since he had come back, he hit 382 with two home runs, two doubles, two triples, and six RBI in eight games. He had five multi hit games in that stretch. His average started at 200. He brought it up to 255. The Angels have a ton of injuries in their outfield right now. Obviously, Mike Trout headlines that. Mm. So they had a guy in AAA who was swinging a hot bat and they brought him up. Joe Madden did come out and say that. He wants him to expect to remain up here for the remainder of the season, that he doesn't want him to put pressure on himself to get in his head. Like told reporters told him they want him here for the rest of the season, even when Trout comes back. So uh, what do you know about him? Brandon Marsh. Is he a nice guy? He's a great kid. Um, Unfortunately, he lost his father to cancer in April this year. Mm -hmm. Um, And his mom brought an urn with his dad's ashes out for his debut and despite going over four, they were all able to share, his family were able to share, share a very special moment yeah. with his dad's ashes and his mom. And so that was, that was really cool. I thought it was a really cool part of the story. It was yeah. very, very nice. Yeah. yeah. But he's a great kid. Looks like Jesus. He looks a little he bit looks like, Jesus. like He looks like Jesus and Charlie Blackman. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Brandon Marsh. He'll be probably split in time in center field with Juan Lagares until Mike Trout's back. And then we'll okay. see what they what happens. Yeah. You have two exciting people. Now. I do. So yeah, a little different. Uh, two of our two of our favorites got to fight it out. And uh, I mean, it was impressive, let's be honest. Um, basically the best head-to-head matchup we've had as a farm to fame prospect and the pair of them combined. I'm talking about Julio Rodriguez yes. and Bobby Witt Jr. Let's and go. the pair of them combined for five home runs in four games, the first Let's four games go. of the series. And then Bobby Witt Jr. decided to get called up to Triple A. So massive week for him. Congratulations. Promotion pod. Well done. Do we see Bobby Witt Jr. in September? I spoke to Whit Merrifield this morning about Bobby Witt Jr. Flex. And the words that he said was he is the chosen one. So, wow, I would think that we see him in September. Honestly, you don't promote him like this. Well, let's just look at his season. Okay. Okay. 292, 16 home runs, 50 RBIs, 40 stolen bases, and a 931 OPS. If that's not the most balanced minor league line you've ever seen, I don't know what is. He's got a great personality. You heard him on the mic at the Futures game. Speaking of the Futures game, mm. you, saw, you saw Julio Rodriguez's old man. His dad surprised him yes. at the Futures game oh. while he was playing, like, awesome, games, awesome yeah. stories. And you know what's crazy? This just popped into my head. You know what's nuts? What's nuts? I don't think I can ever remember a time, and maybe it's because I'm doing this podcast. I don't know. But I don't think that there's ever been a time where there's been such excitement around minor league baseball. People are showing up to go and watch prospects in their town, which is fucking cool. Yeah. It's cool that we know who these guys are before they get to the big leagues. I didn't know that. That this like I knew them when they showed up. Now yeah. it's like, well, let's let's follow their journey. Let's it's exciting to know about these guys. It's great. Let's just jump on the Colorado train, bro, and follow the journey, bro. Who won the series, Julio or Bobby? That's not over yet. They've only played four or five. Okay. Who's winning it right now? I couldn't tell you. Great okay. question. Maddie Mass will look that up. Uh, super excited that Bobby Witt got promoted. Um, Me too. Brennan Davis, 
the Cubs second overall prospect. He's in double A. He's an outfielder. He was the 2021 futures game MVP and the Cubs second round pick in 2018 month of July. You ask 370 1267 OPS. He homered on Sunday for his second straight game oppo both times. Um, and it was his 12th extra base hit of the month. He's hitting three hundo since he came back from the break. He's already matched his career high in home runs this season with eight. So yeah, he was the futures game MVP. He's had a great month of July, homered in consecutive games. Uh, people on Twitter really like Brennan Davis. They like one him up right now, but he's in double A. You can clap now. The series was split between those two. That's finished. They only played a four game series. Yeah. They, well, get no, no, they played double headers. It was three three the series. When uh, I asked six. who won the series, I meant who had a better series between uh, and Bobby. I'm sorry, I phrased that weird. One hit, three home runs. One hit, two home runs. Julio Rodriguez on the season, by the way, is hitting three eleven with nine home runs, wow. thirty RBIs, seven stolen bases, and a nine sixty seven OPS. So. He's also doing it down there. Yeah. So let's just, Bobby Witt's getting called up, but Julio is not far. Julio represented, you know, the Dominican and the Olympic qualifiers. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all, you know, they're all, they're both having wonderful seasons and it's, it's going to be fun to follow them for the next couple of years. Yeah. Even this year. So now is when we do our injuries. We told you about Jazz. Yes. We told you about Ion. Yes. Um, we talked about the Mets. But yeah. Jacob deGrom, mm. I mean, so Friday, he shows up to PNC Park. It was a day later than the rest of the team. He was supposed to pitch on Sunday in the series finale versus the Pirates. But in his bullpen, he started feeling that tightness again. So they shut him down from throwing. Yes. Why are no, you it's, in the, it's in the forearm now. Oh, my bad. Forearm. You are correct. Yeah. You are correct. Yeah. So they put him on the IL, man. Um, mm. I hate it. It is his second IL stint in the past two months, his fifth injury of the year. The MRI did show no structural damage, but it hasn't been showing structural damage. Um, yeah. So like when we're talking about the NL East being wonky, man, this is like. Let's throw a spanner in it. This is a bombshell in it. Yeah. This is why the Braves can't, can't just give up. Mm -hmm. right because obviously if you can luck into the playoffs it's better to get into the playoffs than to not get into the playoffs and even if it's just a couple of games you guys get to play that's a couple more games of experience that the younger guys get to carry into 2022 go ahead Matt. how much is it worth it to get into the playoffs and get spanked by the dodgers but give up your future well that's the thing as long as you don't give up anything and you manage to stumble in fine but if you have to give something up and then you stumble in and then you've got no chance of winning it anyway, like that's my old argument. Like don't give up anything, which they haven't. Bryce Ball, big kid, I get it. But to get Jock, you've got to go get something, right? So Bryce Ball was a piece that they're willing to give up. They've still got they've still got a couple of pieces in the, in the organization. So that's, I don't think you'll see a Drew Waters get traded. I don't think you'll see, you know, a Pache get traded. I don't think you'll see a Bryce Wilson get traded. I don't think you see any of those sorts of moves. I think you'll see a lot of that lower level transactions from the Braves anyway. How concerned are you about DeGrom on a scale from one to 10, knowing that the MRIs keep coming back negative, like that they're showing no damage, but this right. has been, he has had a lot of injuries this year. I just, I just think it, um, I'm concerned because when someone's going good, you don't get MRIs every week. Like yeah. there's something that's, that's a miss, whether it's his shoulder or elbow, whatever it is, there's something physically wrong, but it's not affecting him when he gets out there and pitches in a game. It's just, he's the same guy every time. Yeah. It's not like there's been a drop in velocity or his, his pitches aren't as sharp. Every time he gets on the mound, he's doing the same thing, but he's just getting an MRI every week and trying to figure out that if this is him at not a hundred percent, like I know, I don't, I don't understand how he's going to be when he feels good. I just cannot, I don't get it. Well, 
we'll be keeping an eye on him because there's there's just no timeline. Like they're not going to pitch him again until that tightness is gone, um, mm. which just sucks because he's having such a freaking good year, man. Yes, Go Maddie. Ahead. The only other thing to call out on Degrom, just because I love when minor league, any professional sports team, they know how to work social media. Yeah. The Cardinals, like yeah. low A, you saw this. Well, I didn't see it, but I know how they were tweeting when he rehabbed against them. Yeah, so he rehabbed against them, and he destroyed them, obviously, and they were like, what the hell kind of thing. Yeah. And then when the when the Mets announced that DeGrom was going back on the IL, they just tweeted, like, the blushing face, like they were nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so good. Shout yeah, out to that, that social media manager. <laughs> yeah, they're killing it. Um, one other like big league guy, Chris Sale, rehabbed mm. in rookie ball on July 15th. He went three innings, four hits, no runs, no walks, five Ks. Don't like the four hits, Peter, versus rookies, but I know that he's just trying to That's come back. That's nothing to read into, on, Kelsey. Probably that is nothing stuff. to read into. Okay. I have got my ass kicked every single time I've been in a rehab assignment. I went to Rome, low A, low A. And got, got your ass kicked in Blitzball. <laughs> fucking Polax. And I got my ass kicked in Blitzball. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. Next year, next year, when I've had a time to, to throw bullpens with Blitzballs, it's over. Dude, the back alley at bats. Hey, is, was it Tommy John for Chris Sale? Yeah. Okay. Who were we just talking about before that? Oh, that's right. DeGrom did Mike Trout, did Mike Trout go on a rehab assignment? Not that I've seen. That'd be fine. Feeling close to 100%. Mike Trout, nearly 100% two days ago. Uh, expected back within two weeks. Mike Trout. Thank there you God. go. So he's close too. So that's fine. Yeah. Can we get into Aussie lingo? Yes, please. Okay. Please. Booze bust. Love this one. Booze bust. Do we What's get a sentence? What's the last word? Bus or bust? No T. Bus. Booze bus. Is it Booze, one word? Bus. Two word. Can you spell Two it? Two words. B O O Z E space bus, which is spelt B U S. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Um, Origin? They take people to school. They take people to sport? School. A bus. You know, yes. Helen asked, oh, yeah. um, what's its origin? Can you use it in a sentence? So, I mean, like, I feel like booze buses are a thing, like party buses in America, and you, like, take them places and drink on them. Is that your guess? No, I feel like that's too obvious. Okay. Um, yeah, but is it, though? Is it a type of car? A bus. Yes, it's a bus. It's an actual bus. Okay. Then... But it's, there's a reason for it. This bus um, is a big bus and it transports people to sporting events. Okay, Maddie? Before you said it was a real bus, I was just gonna say that it's what you call a limousine. But now mm -hmm. given the bus, I'll just say it's a bachelor slash bachelorette party mobile. Correct. No, incorrect, oh. but good answer. So close. What it is, it is a booze bus, is a random breath testing bus that will set up all across the state and pull people over and breath test them on their way home from nights out. So, so it's, like it's a called checkpoint? a booze bus. It's a checkpoint. It's a booze bus. And if you see the flashing lights and you've had a couple of drinks, instantly it starts to hit you. Like, oh, my God. I'm, it's it's Do yeah. you turn so have, around? What do you mean? It's like you, you're on a freeway and you get pulled over. They block the whole freeway. You cannot get past. Every and single be, car. Every single car. Like they'll they'll usher in eight at a time and then they'll let everyone go past. And then they'll do that eight more random. So much traffic. What if you're in a hurry? <gasps> you, if you're in a hurry at two in the morning, you shouldn't be on that road. Yeah. Because they're just trying to, they do such a good job. Every single cop in, in Australia has a breath a breathalyzer that they, and I guess they do over here now too, but you can refuse it here, I guess, for some yeah. reason. Um, in Australia, it's like blowing this, you're done. See, see you later. 
but it, the, the drinking limits are also 0.05 and there's so many restrictions with the P platers. And if you're a learner driver, you don't get your license till you're 18. Then you've got to be on a certain oh. restricted license to for a year. And then you can, and you can't drink. You can't have a drop of alcohol in your system. You can't, you can't speed for the first year. You can't have passengers in your car. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, there's so many rules, but I just thought booze bus was something that you guys probably how often before. like is that common that you see a, a booze bus like set up like you're just driving and then you're like oh every single night there is multiple booze buses set up across the state wow i want to google it so and that they're, they're like you stay in the car and you blow and then if you blow over the limit they pull you over then you go into the booze bus and you do a blood test and if you're still over you get arrested on the spot and they leave your car there and you go to jail Wait, these buses are wild. It says yeah. 0.05 drugs police on the side. And they test for drugs too. So they swipe your mouth for uh, any kinds of recreational drugs and, and alcohol. That's wild. Wild, huh? Yeah. So not only are we doing lingo, but we're doing education. When I type in booze bus into Google, all of my recommendations are Nashville, Aruba, yeah. near me, <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> That's America, man. Yeah. <laughs> we're uh we're trying, you know, we're, we're just doing not, it. Yeah. You guys are doing it. You guys are doing it. Um good episode. Lots we say that every week. I love it. Lots of information <laughs> though. Um hate all the injuries. Hope you guys took something away from uh the draft talk. But yeah, guys, we're we're back in our regularly scheduled homes. Yep. And uh we had a blast in Denver. Touch on a few new players today, a few new teams today. Yeah. Good. But like the Spread main ourselves. takeaway that I want people to know who started listening to Peter and I through John Boy and not through like following Peter and I previously is this company that you guys love and like, like to listen to and like to watch. They are some of the best people ever. So like you have chosen very wisely for how you spend your podcast and YouTube listening slash watching hours. The beautiful part about it is that you're getting honest information. Yeah. Everything that comes out of every one of these person's mouths is genuine and honest and it's not bullshit. Yeah. I'm not, no one says anything for the sake of saying anything. We're not being told what to say. Everything you hear come out of our mouths is genuinely how we feel. And that's what makes this so successful. And I'm not just talking about this. I'm talking about John Boy Media, the company, is people appreciate honesty, especially now. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. We love y'all. Farm on. Farm often. This can be our promotion, by the way. Have a great week. We love y'all. See you Wednesday. Farm on, baby. Farm often. I sound an American. Yes, you did. Farm <laughs> often. Bye, bye, bye. Hair looks incredible, by the way. Yeah, it does. I just woke up. I woke up like this. <laughs>